Did you know that long before airplanes soared through the skies, planet Earth had already known flying giants? Creatures so enormous that if they lived today, they would put any modern bird to shame. These beings weren't just ordinary animals, they were true titans of the air, masters of the prehistoric skies. But just how big were they? In this video, we'll explore the five most colossal flying creatures that ever existed on our planet. So get ready. We're traveling millions of years into the past to uncover these majestic creatures that once ruled the prehistoric skies. Number five, Istiodactylus. This pterosaur, whose name means sail-like finger, lived approximately 120 million years ago during the early Cretaceous period. Although not the largest of the flying giants, its unique characteristics make it a fascinating animal worthy of study. The Istiodactylus had a wingspan of about five meters, 16 feet, placing it in the category of expert gliders. Its long, thin wings were ideal for riding air currents and covering great distances with minimal energy expenditure. Imagine a modern paraglider, but alive and muscular. That's essentially what this pterosaur was. Like many pterosaurs, its bones were hollow and lightweight, allowing it to stay aloft for extended periods. This creature lived in coastal areas where constant winds provided ideal conditions for gliding over the waves. It's easy to picture it gracefully soaring through the skies, searching for opportunities to feed. What sets the Istiodactylus apart is its teeth. Unlike other pterosaurs whose teeth were adapted for catching slippery fish, this one had sharp, blade-like teeth arranged in a crescent shape along its jaw. This unique dentition gave it an efficient bite for slicing flesh, suggesting that the Istiodactylus was a scavenger specialized in feeding on dead animals it found floating in the water or stranded on beaches. Some paleontologists believe that while it could hunt fish if necessary, its design was better suited for cutting chunks of meat from carcasses, making it something like the cleaner of its ecosystem. This role was crucial in maintaining the health of prehistoric ecosystems by disposing of remains that might otherwise attract disease. The Istiodactylus lived in what we now know as Europe, which during the early Cretaceous was an archipelago of islands surrounded by shallow seas. These coastal areas were rich in marine life, providing ample food for this pterosaur. It's important to note that while it was a skilled flyer, the Istiodactylus likely spent a fair amount of time on land. Its strong hind legs allowed it to walk awkwardly as it searched for food along the beaches. However, it wasn't an agile runner. Its true strength lay in the air. Today, the fossils of Istiodactylus did tell us its story, its discovery shows how pterosaurs were not just remarkable flyers, but also creatures highly adapted to their specific environments. Every feature of this animal, from its blade-like teeth to its long wings, speaks of a design perfectly suited to its way of life. Number four, the magnificent Ornithocerus. The fourth flying giant on our list is the magnificent Ornithocerus, whose name means bird hand. This pterosaur, which lived around 110 million years ago during the Cretaceous period, is a perfect example of how nature can design aerodynamic creatures capable of dominating the skies. With a wingspan of up to 7 meters, 23 feet, this airborne animal was a true traveler of the skies, capable of covering long distances without landing. Ornithocerus was perfectly adapted for life in the air. Its long, slender wings allowed it to ride air currents, gliding for hours or even days without constant flapping. This style of flight not only conserved energy, but also made it an efficient traveler, capable of crossing seas and exploring vast areas in search of food. It's believed that Ornithocerus lived primarily near coastal and estuarine regions, where air currents were ideal for its flight style. These areas were also teeming with fish and other marine animals that made up its diet. Unlike Istiodactylus, which had teeth designed for slicing meat, Ornithocerus had a long, narrow beak with small, sharp teeth, perfect for catching slippery fish. This pterosaur likely flew low over the water, using its beak to snatch fish in motion. Think of it as an expert fisher, knowing exactly when and where to cast its net to catch its prey. It's also suggested that Ornithocerus used its large size to intimidate smaller flying animals, stealing their catches when necessary. While it wasn't the largest pterosaur, it certainly had an imposing presence. During the time of Ornithocerus, the world was vastly different from what we know today. 
Continents were constantly shifting, and large areas were covered by shallow seas. This pterosaur would have flown over these vast stretches of water, taking advantage of warm air currents rising from the surface to glide effortlessly. The skies weren't empty, they were filled with other pterosaurs, primitive birds, and predators sharing the aerial space. However, Ornithocharis had an advantage, its size. With a wingspan of seven meters, few animals could compete with it in terms of dominance in the sky. Although Ornithocharis spent most of its time in the air, it occasionally needed to land. Its hind legs were thin and not particularly strong, allowing it to move clumsily on the ground. It likely sought open areas or beaches to rest, away from potential terrestrial predators. Like many pterosaurs, it probably nested on cliffs or islands where its offspring were protected from most predators. These elevated areas also gave it a strategic advantage. From a high perch, it could easily launch itself into the air. Ornithocharus is a brilliant example of how evolution can perfect a design to suit a unique lifestyle. With its impressive wingspan, ability to glide for extended periods, and skill as an aerial fisher, this flying giant was a true master of the air currents. Number three, the iconic Pteranodon. Taking the third spot on our list of prehistoric flying giants is the iconic Pteranodon, one of the best known and most emblematic pterosaurs. Its name means toothless wing. He's a fitting title for this master of the skies that lived approximately 85 million years ago during the late Cretaceous period. With a wingspan of up to nine meters, 30 feet, this colossal glider was truly a giant among the flyers of its time. Pteranodon is best known for its impressive wingspan, which made it one of the largest pterosaurs of its era. Although it wasn't the biggest prehistoric flyer, it was perfectly designed to dominate the skies. Its long, narrow wings were ideal for gliding over the vast coasts and inland seas where it lived. Unlike many modern birds, Pteranodon didn't rely on constant flapping. Instead, it used air currents to stay aloft for long periods with minimal effort. Imagine an enormous living glider gracefully sliding over the water, almost as if it were part of the wind. That was the essence of Pteranodon. This pterosaur inhabited coastal regions and inland seas, such as those that covered much of North America during the Cretaceous. These waters were rich in fish and other marine life, forming the base of Pteranodon's diet. Despite lacking teeth, its long pointed beak was perfectly adapted for catching fish. It likely flew low over the water, using its beak to snatch prey with precision while maintaining a stable flight. This hunting style allowed Pteranodon to be an efficient predator without needing to dive into the water like modern pelicans. It likely took advantage of beaches and shallow areas to rest and feed when not in flight. One of the most striking features of Pteranodon is its elongated pointed crest extending from the back of its skull. The size and shape of this crest varied between individuals, and paleontologists believe it served multiple purposes. Firstly, the crest may have acted as a counterbalance to its long beak, helping maintain a stable center of gravity during flight. Alternatively, it may have played a role in courtship and communication, with males using larger, more prominent crests to attract females, similar to how peacocks display their feathers today. While its exact function remains uncertain, the crest undoubtedly made Pteranodon even more impressive and unique. Pteranodon's body was small compared to its enormous wings, a feature that made it extremely efficient in the air. Its hollow bones were incredibly lightweight, yet strong enough to withstand the stresses of flight. These adaptations not only allowed it to remain airborne for extended periods, but also enabled it to take off from land or water surfaces. On land, Pteranodon likely moved awkwardly, using its wings for support while walking. Although it wasn't an agile runner, its ability to take off quickly provided an advantage when escaping predators or searching for food. Moreover, Pteranodon demonstrates how nature can create designs perfectly suited for specific purposes. Every detail of its body, from its lightweight bones to its striking crest, was optimized for life in the air. Pteranodon serves as a reminder that life in the past was just as diverse and astonishing as it is today. This colossal navigator not only ruled the skies, but also played a crucial role in its ecosystem as a predator and competitor. Number two, the mighty Hatsagopteryx. 
Taking the second spot on our list of winged giants is a true colossus of the skies, Hatsagopteryx. This pterosaur, whose name means wing from Hatseg, in honor of the region where its remains were discovered, lived around 70 million years ago during the late Cretaceous. With a wingspan of nearly 11 meters, 36 feet, this titan not only dominated the skies, but also played an imposing role on land. Hatsagopteryx belongs to a group of pterosaurs known as Ajdarkids, famous for being some of the largest flyers to ever exist. What truly sets Hatsagopteryx apart, however, isn't just its size, it's its robust build. While other large pterosaurs were slender and specialized for long-distance flight, Hatsagopteryx had a much stronger, more muscular body. Its neck, in particular, was extraordinarily thick and short for a pterosaur of its size, allowing it to withstand significant stresses. This robustness likely enabled it to hunt large prey on land, an uncommon trait for pterosaurs. In essence, Hatsagopteryx wasn't just an incredible flyer, but also a formidable terrestrial predator. With a wingspan of almost 11 meters, Hatsagopteryx was an imposing presence in the sky. Its size gave it several advantages, such as the ability to glide for extended periods without expending much energy and the capability to cover vast areas in search of food. However, its massive size also posed challenges. For example, takeoff was a complex task for such a large animal. Paleontologists believe that Hatsagopteryx used a method known as quadrupedal launch, where it propelled itself into the air using its wings and front limbs, much like a giant bat. Once airborne, its enormous wingspan and lightweight, hollow bones allowed it to fly with relative ease. Unlike other pterosaurs that spent most of their time in the air or near water, Hatsagopteryx appears to have been both a flyer and a terrestrial hunter. This dual role was largely influenced by its habitat. Its fossils were discovered in what is now Romania, specifically in a region called the Hatseg Island. During the late Cretaceous, this island was isolated from the rest of Europe, creating a unique ecosystem where many animals were smaller due to limited resources, a phenomenon known as island dwarfism. In this environment, Hatsagopteryx was, quite literally, the king. Its potential prey included small herbivorous dinosaurs and other terrestrial animals, which it likely hunted from the ground using its immense size and strength. This varied diet made it incredibly adaptable, allowing it to thrive in an environment that would have been challenging for other large predators. On land, Hatsagopteryx walked using its wings as support, a characteristic stance of pterosaurs. While it wasn't an agile runner, its immense size and strength would have made it an intimidating predator. Hatsagopteryx demonstrates that winged giants were not just masters of the air, but also extraordinary adapters to the challenges of their time. This titan, with its imposing size and robust design, left an indelible mark on the prehistoric world. Number one, the majestic Quetzalcoatlus. We've reached the number one spot on our list, the majestic Quetzalcoatlus, the ultimate colossus of the prehistoric skies. This pterosaur, named in honor of the Mesoamerican deity Quetzalcoatl, lived approximately 68 million years ago during the late Cretaceous, just before the mass extinction that marked the end of the dinosaurs. With a wingspan exceeding 12 meters, 39 feet, Quetzalcoatlus is not only the largest known pterosaur, but also the most imposing flying animal to have ever existed. The size of Quetzalcoatlus is astounding. Its wingspan rivaled that of a small airplane, and its height, when standing on the ground, could exceed that of a modern giraffe. This titan could look many dinosaurs directly in the eye as it walked across the land. Its size granted it significant advantages in terms of dominance and access to resources, but also posed unique challenges, particularly for takeoff and flight. The ability of Quetzalcoatlus to fly despite its enormous size is one of the most fascinating topics for paleontologists. This pterosaur had hollow but incredibly strong bones, a perfect adaptation to reduce weight without sacrificing strength. Its wings, made of muscular membranes and skin, were lightweight and highly efficient aerodynamically. To take off, scientists believe Quetzalcoatlus used a method known as quadrupedal launch. This involved using its hind legs and front limbs, which were part of its wings, to propel itself into the air with a powerful leap. Once airborne, it would ride air currents to glide for long periods with minimal effort. 
Its flight style was likely similar to that of modern albatrosses, capable of covering vast distances without constant flapping. Although primarily known as a flyer, Quetzalcoatlus also spent significant time on land, where its behavior becomes even more intriguing. For years, scientists believed it was a fisher that scooped up fish from the water like a pelican. However, recent studies suggest its diet was more diverse. Quetzalcoatlus lived in dry environments far from coasts, indicating it likely hunted on land. Some paleontologists believe it fed on small dinosaurs, mammals, and reptiles, using its long beak to catch and swallow prey. Its massive size allowed it to hunt without fear of most predators, and its versatility made it a successful survivor in a diverse ecosystem. The anatomy of Quetzalcoatlus was a marvel of evolutionary engineering. Its neck was long and slender, yet incredibly strong, capable of supporting the weight of its elongated beak. This beak, which could reach up to three meters, 10 feet in length, was sharp and toothless, a perfect tool for capturing and manipulating prey. On the ground, Quetzalcoatlus moved in a quadrupedal stance, using its front limbs for support. Although it wasn't a fast runner, its sheer size and strength made it an intimidating presence even when not in the air. Quetzalcoatlus lived in what is now Texas in a time when North America was divided by a vast inland sea. These dry, open environments provided expansive areas for hunting and gliding. Its ability to traverse great distances gave it access to resources unavailable to other animals, making it one of the most successful predators of its time. The discovery of Quetzalcoatlus revolutionized our understanding of giant pterosaurs. Before its discovery, it was thought impossible for an animal of its size to fly. However, this colossus demonstrated that evolution could overcome even the most extreme limitations. Its fossils, unearthed in the 1970s, continued to be studied, revealing new insights into its biology and behavior. Quetzalcoatlus wasn't just a giant of the skies, but also a testament to the power of evolutionary adaptation. Its immense size, combined with its ability to fly and hunt on land, made it a versatile and dominant predator. Though it lived millions of years ago, its story continues to captivate scientists and enthusiasts alike. Without a doubt, Quetzalcoatlus is the undisputed king among flying giants. Click on the video on the screen to continue learning more with our content. See you later.